Hey YouTube, um, it's Anna back. So I wanted to do a video. Um, this video is very, very important to me. It's personal to me. Um, um, I was just wondering, like, is other parents out there dealing with, you know, a children, a child like this or children like this? So I definitely wanted to talk on the subject of ADHD. And how is parents dealing with a child who has ADHD? So ADHD basically is just a background on ADHD. I'm just looking down at my notes. Uh, ADHD is attention deficient hyperactivity disorder. So a child can have it going from their childhood all the way up to their adulthood. It can continue in um, a child's life. Um, some children can grow out of it with help. But, you know, some um, adults have it still, so uh, it definitely can travel with your child. Um, inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity are the key behaviors in ADHD. Those are the main three um, key behaviors um, when they're diagnosing your child with ADHD. Uh, it's normal for a child to be, to have one of the three, but with children with ADHD, it's definitely severe symptoms and they can have um, behavior issues in all three of the groups. Um, to be diagnosed with ADHD, a child must have symptoms from six or more. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I read what I wrote. Uh, six or more. The child had to have symptoms for six or more months. Um, also, more symptoms of, they got to have six or more symptoms of inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity must be present. So some of the symptoms of inattention is easily distracted. They forget things. Frequently switch from one activity to another. Um... Become bored with the task after a few minutes unless it's something that they enjoy doing. Have difficulty focusing attention and completing a task. Have trouble completing or turning in homework. Often losing things um, that they need to complete their tasks. Pencils, notebook, paper, book bag, things of that nature. So those are the symptoms for inattention. And... The next symptoms is for hyperactivity. Fidget and swarm in their seats. So when they're moving around a lot in their seats while they're supposed to be sitting still, if they talk a lot, if they just touch and play with everything that's in sight, um, no matter what it is, they just touch and play, and that's not what they're supposed to be doing at the time. Have trouble sitting during dinner time. Have trouble sitting in school. Um... They're just in a constant motion. Like, they constantly just keep moving and can't stop moving. Um, have difficulty doing quiet tasks and activities. So, if they have difficulty doing something quiet because they want to talk and they want to move and they want to do, you know, a lot of those type of things, those are symptoms of ADHD. The last one is impulsivity. Um, they're very impatient. Um, they blurt out inappropriate comments when it's not their turn, have difficulty waiting their turn in games, or waiting for things that they want. Often interrupt conversations and other people activities. So, my daughter Ane was diagnosed with ADHD when she was in the first grade. When she was in the first grade, she was diagnosed with ADHD. Um, as a child, she was very hyper. Uh, she couldn't sit still. She was always running around, flipping, jumping, um, talking. She was doing all these. Um, she was just doing. Sorry about that, but she was doing um, all kinds of things like that. And people used to always tell me, for instance, my sisters and you know. Family, friends used to always tell me, oh, you need to go get her checked out. Uh, something's wrong with her. You need to go get her checked out. And I was in denial. Uh, 
you know, she did have issues as far as like sitting down and sitting still and paying attention and listening. And that was the main reason why I wouldn't allow anyone to babysit her. Um, if it was somewhere that she couldn't go with me, I wouldn't let her go. I was afraid of letting someone babysit her because I know that she's, uh, she was a difficult child to deal with. And I was just afraid of someone hurting her because they didn't know how to deal with her. And me being her mom, you know, I could deal with her and I have more patience with her because she's my child. So I was afraid of like my sister's, you know, she have kids and she'd be like, oh, you know, I'll take her. And I just be like, no, it's all right. She could stay with me. Um, only because I was just afraid of someone getting aggravated with her, not wanting to deal with her and eventually harming her in some way. Which I don't think my sister uh, would do something like that. But that was just um, something that I was afraid of. And I wouldn't uh, be able to live with if something was to happen to her. So I was like that um, as far as growing up. Then I used to always think like, what are you trying to say about my child? Like nothing's wrong with her. She's fine. Um, she's very smart. You know, and it was definitely difficult for me to deal with. And then when me and Lady got together, you know, one day she went with me to take my daughter to the doctors. And, you know, you know the doctor office always have all these different pamphlets hanging around. So one day she gave me a pamphlet. She That day at the doctor, she gave me a pamphlet and she said, I need you to read this. So on the front of it, it says ADHD. And their symptoms and I'm like why do I need I got really upset I got really offensive towards her and was like why do I need to read this what are you trying to say about my child uh you know I was really mad at her because I felt like she was coming um coming at my daughter and you know I felt bad like you know like why would you say something's wrong with her you know so that's just how I was with everybody when they approached the situation of how my daughter's behavior was and how she acts. And she was like, no, I love her as if she was my own child. I, I would never come for her. You need to stop thinking that people's coming for her and maybe people is just trying to help. So um, I kept the pamphlet and I read it. And, you know, I said to her, I said, she has every symptom in this book. So, I'm like, reading this book, it's like reading a book that they specially made about my child. So, I was like, it's time to get her help, you know? Like, it took her to open up my eyes and realize that it's nothing wrong with her. She's just special. So, you know, so I was definitely, like, just hurt because I felt like I let her down. Like, you know, because now she may have this disorder and it's nothing that I can do for her. So, I called and I made an appointment with two different specialists for her. And... I took her to both and you know just to get a second opinion because one person may say yeah one person may say no now at first she was small when I first uh mentioned it to her teachers she was in preschool and the teacher was like oh no she's just a baby you just gotta let her ch just let us check her out uh, we have someone come in and at this time when she was in preschool her her biological father was flip floppy in her life and you know he came to the meeting and he was just like you're not putting my daughter on medication x y and z you know he was flipping out so they told us to wait and see how things go so as we got to kindergarten it seems like the behavior issues was getting worse it was the same things the same exact things but they were worse now they're more severe now as the year went on and i'm like okay so i, I boarded to her her kindergarten teacher um, attention. It was like, oh, she's transitioning from a little school to a big girl school. It's nothing wrong. Um, but literally every single day of the whole school year, I got a bad complaint about her in school. 
every single day. It was not one day that I didn't get a bad complaint when I came and picked her up. Um, she was very smart though. Very smart. They was even thinking about skipping her um, so that she would do kindergarten in the morning and first grade in the afternoon. She was very smart. She learned to work very, very fast, and she would get bored fast. If it, was some, it wasn't something that she was interested in doing, she would get bored fast. She wouldn't want to do it. Or she would um, rush to her work. It's correct, but now she's bored, so now she's bothering the other kids. So they still said she was too young to be evaluated. So here come first grade. And, you know, this time I'm like, no, she's not too young now. It's something that we have to do. So I spoke with the social worker at her school. Very nice lady. Um, she's actually have a 10-year-old now as well. Her and my daughter is the same age. And she suffered from ADHD as well. So she was giving me her experience on what she had to deal with, with her daughter and the same type of symptoms and you know, she was telling me things that they did. So, at this time, her um, Ane's biological father is no longer in her life. Uh, he's uh, doing whatever it is that he does. He doesn't come around. So, I had to make all these decisions on my own. Um, lady helps me, but she can't make a final decision for her. Um, being so that she's not her... Uh, adoptive mother or dad or her biological um parents so i had to make all these decisions on my own so that was also tough so we made her two doctor's appointments and we took her to two different specialists and so the first specialist we went to she had a, the teacher they gave me paperwork and had the teacher fill out for how her behavior is at school and me fill out uh how her behavior is at home and I guess it's a point system on how to evaluate. And like I said, they got to have six of, you know, at least six of each category um, of the symptoms. And say, for instance, the category had 12 symptoms. And they had all 12 symptoms. Um, in each category, she had over the amount she was supposed to have to be diagnosed. Like it was a 10 out of 10 on the hyperactivity, is it eight out of eight on the impulsivity? Like every, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that word correct, but every category she had above the amount that they needed to evaluate her. So, you know, the doctor said, 100% hands down, she has ADHD in a severe case of ADHD. Um, at the at the time, it wasn't affecting her work. Um, and the doctor was like, well, what do you want to do? And I'm like, well, I'm not really interested in putting her on medication um, right now. You know, I didn't want to turn her into a zombie or, you know, uh, making her... Like, you know, the medications does have side effects on people. And it, it turns them into other things, you know, like, and I just wanted her to be her normal self. So we decided to do a 504 plan. So which that plan is, is that we could set up a plan with her school and all her teacher has to abide by these plans. Um, so we made sure that she's sitting in the front row of each class. We make sure that she had, um, they made sure she had all her assignments because she would come home and forget all her homework at school. She would come um, go to school and forget to turn in all her homework after her teacher just said, put your homework in the basket. She would forget everything. She loses everything. Um, her desk is messy. Um, she's always fidgeting, always. Um, never pays attention. She gets bored really fast. If she's in there watching TV, she, through the whole show, the show could be 30 minutes long, and she at least get up 50 times to tell me what happened um, during the show. And I'm just like, how how did you even see the show if you're up 50 times telling me, you know, what happened? Um, if we're having a conversation, adults, she always interrupts. It, it never fails. She would never say, excuse me, mom. She just immediately blurts out. That's how she was in school. She would just blurt out answers why the teacher wasn't even talking to her. It was another child go. Um, so it was definitely 
hard for me to understand uh, what was going on because now I'm just like, now it's real. Um, so we went to the second specialist. I just wanted a second opinion. Um, same thing. 10 out of 10, 8 out of 10, um, 6 out of 6. You know, so the, the second doctor actually said, hands down, she has ADHD and it's a severe case. So that's the same thing that the first doctor said. So now I know it's real and it's nothing I can do. So at the time I was pregnant with Alani. So they was like, oh, it's genetic. And I asked them, I said, well, is, did I give it to her? Is it from her dad? And can my baby that I'm pregnant with now have it? And they said, you know, we'll cross that line when you have the baby and the baby get older and you start seeing signs. But, you know, they asked questions about her biological dad and asked questions about uh, me. And basically they explained that it came from me um, because I had behavior issues growing up, not listening. I just did my own thing, wouldn't sit down. And her father had a... um an academic um, issue and they said that that seems not to be the issue here um, because he she doesn't have any academic problems um, she learns very well very fast she doesn't have any of those problems um, so basically I gave it to her so to hear that I gave my child a disorder that I didn't even know that I had growing up and that my parents didn't seek help for me about it's really hard to deal with because now I feel helpless. Like I gave this to her and there's nothing I can do. And I'm just trying my hardest to help her out and to work with her. So that's basically what I did. Um, got her help. Hold on, someone at the door. Hold on. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. But um, so we decided to do the same thing with this doctor that we had discussed with the first doctor. Um, we ended up going with the second doctor. And we had the doctor uh, start a 504 plan for her. And we wanted to see how did that work out for um, a few months. It definitely didn't work out. Uh, it wasn't helping her out. She definitely was doing the same things. It got to the point where her teacher didn't want to teach her really anymore. Um, and was thinking about putting her in a special ed class because she was dis distracting the other students. And, you know, I tried to talk to her, sit her down and like, you know, the other students, their parents didn't bring them to school to, for you to distract them. Um, but the social worker at the school said they cannot do that. She will not be going to the class because that's not what she need. So I decided to put her on medication. It was a hard decision to make, but it was a decision that I had to make, um, to help her. If I don't help her now, it's only going to get worse in the long run. So I uh, made the decision. We went back to the doctor and we started on a medication. Um, the medication she started on, I can't even remember the name now. Um, but it definitely didn't work. Um, she was on that medication for a while and um, no signs of changing, no signs of anything. So when I told the teacher that she was on medication, I waited for a while to see how, or if her behavior was going to be changed. I didn't want the teacher to be looking for it. So I asked the teacher, and the teacher was like, she's on medication. I wouldn't have been able to tell because nothing changed, and nothing also changed at home. So I spoke with the doctor, and they had to give her something. that We tried to give her um, a medication that was kind of mild, but we had to give her a little higher medication. And now she's def um she's on a medication called Concerta, and it's definitely a big change with her. Definitely, uh, we see a big difference. Um, ever since she's been on it, I haven't gotten one complaint from school about her behavior. Not one complaint. She don't have to sit in the front of the class anymore. She's uh, sitting down. She's not fidgeting. Like all the symptoms is very, very mild. Like she still talk a lot because it's her friends, but all the symptoms is mild or went away. And you know, a lot of people may not agree to put your kids on medication, but I definitely, uh, did was best for me and that's why we didn't only people that knew was me Ane, and lady because 
I know how my mom react to things and I know how my siblings react to things and how they act about it. So I didn't want to tell anybody. Um, I was a little ashamed, I want to say, but I didn't want to tell anybody. And I finally had to tell when she went away with her grandparents and she needed the medication. So I finally decided to tell my family about it. And my mom was a little rude with her comments, but at the end of the day, what's best for Ane is what matters the most, not what nobody else thinks. And it was the best decision I ever made for her. Um, she's definitely doing great in school. She's definitely, um, I have no problem. She actually just brought home yesterday a certificate. She's student of the month. Um, she got her picture took in. It's going to be posted in, um, in the hallway of her school. So it's definitely, it was definitely rough dealing with um, a child with ADHD. I hold a lot of emotions in um, about it. Um, but I'm just happy that I can talk about it now um, because she's just a bright kid. And um, at first we didn't tell her. We told her she was taking vitamins, but now she know. And she's fine with it. We just want her to feel like she's any other child and there's, no diff there's nothing different about her than the next child that she's sitting next to in class. So that's just something that I just want to talk to. Um, you can leave your comments and your thoughts um, below. If any other parents relate, um, I definitely would like to hear your stories and how you handle things and what what you seem works. What seems to work for your child? Um, that's why we keep her into activities as well, as far as cheerleading and gymnastics, and she's in a garden club at school, and she's in the theater club at school. She just uh, got an instrument at school. We try to keep her busy only because we want to make sure that she's busy, and that's where all her energy is going and not on misbehaving in school. So I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.